Hello, my name is Camille and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to talk about the curves adjustment that you can see in programs like Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere Pro, and basically any other software for video or photo editing. And I'm not going to dive too deep into any of the curves adjustments in any of those programs and explain all the buttons and everything, but instead, I'm going to explain you the underlying principle behind the curves adjustment why is it the curve, what does it mean, and how it actually works. So after watching my video, you will be able to not only apply certain shapes of curves in order to, for instance, boost up the contrast in certain parts of the image or something like this, but you will understand how it works, so you will be able to come up with your own curves and create a unique look in your photos or videos. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna show you some examples in Photoshop, but we're going to primarily work with a piece of paper, a pen, and a ruler, because what I want to do is actually help you understand what's the logic behind the curves and how to read this chart, because after all, it's a chart of a mathematical function. So for instance, in Adobe Photoshop, if you add a curves adjustment layer, you will be presented with this 2D chart that has X and Y axis, and the curve, the default one, is just a straight diagonal line going from 0, 0 to 100, 100, like this. And the reason why this curve is the default one, because this is the identity transformation. This is a chart of a function with a definition y equals x, which basically means that for every x, the value of the function y is exactly the same. So what we have on the x-axis here are the brightness level of our input image and the values on the y-axis are the values of the brightness of the output image after our adjustment. So if we have a pure blacks in our image, which is 0% brightness, the output of the adjustment is also 0%. If we have 50%, the output of the adjustment is also 50%. If we have 100%, the output is also 100%. So this kind of curve that is angled at exactly 45 degrees here, a straight diagonal line, doesn't do anything to our image. This is the default curve because it doesn't affect our image at all. Okay, so now let's take a look at a different example and let's draw a curve from 50% here, just a straight horizontal line like this. The mathematical representation of a function looking like this is y equals 50%. Again, we are working with percentages of the brightness of the image because this is the easiest and it's not affected by the bit depth of our image or anything like this. We can always project the brightness of our image from 0% to 100%. So these are the units that I am working with right here for simplicity. And if you have a function looking like this, y equals 50%, that means that whatever the brightness levels of our input image, which is on the x-axis, for every brightness level, the output will be always 50%. So, what would the image look like with a curves adjustment looking like this? It will be completely, uniformly 50% gray. The entire image will be 50% of gray color. This is of course not very useful, so you typically wouldn't apply a curves like this, but I'm just presenting you this example to help you understand how the curves adjustment actually works so you can better understand how to apply more useful curves. So let's take a look at another example. And for this example, let's draw a curve from 0, 100% to 100% zero. So it's a diagonal, but it's sort of a flipped diagonal, going from the top to bottom. And the mathematical equation that depicts this kind of curve is y equals 100% minus x. So for pure blacks, we have pure whites. For pure whites, we have pure blacks. So what this kind of curve does to our image, it inverts it. The blacks are whites, the whites are blacks, and everything in between is just smoothly projected onto the entire range from 0 to 100%. All right, so now let's take a look at something more useful. Let's draw a curve that looks like this. Let's say that here we have 20% and we draw a curve that looks like this. It's flat from 0 to 20% and then it's diagonal from 20% up to 100%. And it looks like this. This kind of curve is actually very useful, for instance, for removing light pollution in astrophotography. And I actually have a separate video explaining how this kind of curves can let you remove light pollution in your astrophotography in a way that preserve the natural colors of the night sky. So if you wanna check it out, if you're into astrophotography, definitely check out this video, but let's continue with our curves tutorial. So the mathematical definition of a function that looks like this is y equals 
0 for x's that are less than 20% and then x minus 20% times 100 divided by 80 for x's greater or equal 20 and what it means is that for every brightness level from 0 to 20% we get pure blacks. And then for every tone from 20% up to 100% we are stretching the dynamic range again to the range of from 0 to 100. So this kind of curve crushes our blacks. So everything that was from 0 to 20% is now pure blacks. The blacks are crushed. And then the entire image is proportionally darkened a little bit. Because if I drew a diagonal the default one that does nothing and in our curve in every spot on the x-axis that the value of our curve lies below this diagonal then this tone will be darker so for instance for 50 percent the value of this tone will be somewhere here that is not 50 percent because 50 percent is here 50 percent is here and the output value of the tone that is exactly 50% in brightness will be somewhere below. So as we can see, every point in our curve actually lies below this diagonal. So what it means is that the entire image is darkened with the blacks from 0 to 20% completely crushed into pure black. Okay, ready for more? Let's see what we can do in order to darken the image but not crush the blacks. So, let's take a look at another example. In this example, let's start with drawing our diagonal, the default one, that will be our reference point. So, let's draw that. This is the diagonal, this is the curve that does nothing to our image, the identity transformation. And now, instead of drawing a curve that looks like a couple of straight lines, we are actually going to draw it like this. And in a curve like this, we are seeing again that for every tone, the value of our curve lies below this diagonal. So the entire image is getting darker, but we are not crushing any blacks. We are also not clipping any highlights. What we are doing is we are darkening the image in a way that, for instance, here on this level, we are actually decreasing the contrast. And then we are increasing the contrast from this point on somewhere here, up here. So. For this portion of the image, the contrast is increased, but for this portion of the tones, the contrast is decreased. And this kind of curve is actually very commonly used. This is used to just darken your entire image without clipping any highlights or crushing any blacks. So this is the kind of curve that you want to use. And again, you can shape this curve in a way that you want to shape it so that, for instance, you are increasing the contrast in the highlights or maybe you want to increase the contrast in the shadows. So for instance, if this curve looked like this, it would be more aggressively adjusting contrast in those highlight or white areas right here close to 100%. But if we shape it like this, we will be adjusting the contrast starting from a tones that are way darker and way below 50%. So somewhere from here, we will be adjusting the contrast aggressively. Whereas on the green curve, the adjustment of the contrast will be more ag aggressive only from those tones, for instance, from here upwards so the more steep the curve actually is the more contrast the image has if the steepness of the curve is exactly 45 degrees then we are not changing the contrast if the steepness is below 45 percent we are decreasing the contrast and if the steepness is above 45 degrees we are increasing the contrast. And also please don't be confused by the red, green and blue colors on this example. These are not the RGB channels. This is are just the colors of my pen so I can distinguish between those curves. But for this example, for this entire video, we are not working on curves per channel. We are working with the full RGB sort of a luminance curve. So don't be confused by the colors on the, on the chart right here on my piece of paper, okay? And now we're gonna talk about the most commonly used shape of the curve, which is the S curve. So let's Let's draw a sample S-curve, shall we? Okay, so we are again starting with drawing our reference diagonal, so we can talk about contrast. And now let's draw a curve that crosses the coordinates of 50%, 50%. So, 50% here, and 50% here. 
and our curve will be shaped like an S-curve and we'll be crossing this point. So let's take the blue pen and let's draw a curve looking like this. So this curve does not crush any blacks, does not clip any highlights, but it increases the contrast. And why does it increase the contrast? Because for the portion of the brightness in our image from 0 to 50%, the value of the curve lies below this reference diagonal, which means that this portion of the image will be darker. And every tone from 50% to 100% will be brighter because the value of the curve, for instance here, lies above the value of this diagonal. So we are uniformly increasing the contrast in our image. And the shape of this S curve actually determines how much contrast are we introducing in our image. For instance, if we take a look at an S curve shaped like this, that is just below the diagonal here and just above the diagonal here, the contrast that this kind of green curve here introduces is way less than the contrast that the blue curve would introduce. And again, don't be confused by the colors. These are just the colors of my pens. We are working with brightness only here. So the steepness of this curve determines how much contrast are we actually adding. And this is very useful because we could target the S-curve around certain tones of the image. For instance, I was talking about this in my winter photography tutorial that you can check right here. That for instance, if in your image you have a large area of snow that is all in the highlights, but you want to bring out the contrast in this snow to make it pop from the image and make it more appealing overall. And what you want to do is you need to first find out what are the range of tones in this snow and then target the S-curve around this portion. So let's take a look at this example here. For instance, let's say that we have found out that the brightness of our snow lies in this range. So it's in the highlights and it lies within this range. So what we want to do in order to bring out the contrast in these tones is here's the middle point on this diagonal and we're going to draw a curve that looks like this. That means that in this point, which is in the middle of our tone range that we want to adjust, the steepness of this curve right here is the highest. And again, the steeper the curve, the more contrast are we adding around these tones. So we can shape our curves in different ways in order to target certain portions of our image and increase the contrast in the portion in the tonal range that we want to adjust the most. So this is very handy, very useful, and it is unique to every image that you are adjusting. So you just need to look in which range of tones do you want to add contrast and shape your curve accordingly in order to adjust the contrast in this range. Super useful, right? All right, this is pretty much everything that I wanted to share with you today. Hopefully after watching this video, you have a clear vision and clear understanding of what the curves adjustment actually mean. And again, this applies to both photo and video editing, whatever software you use, whether it's from Adobe or not. And so now you understand how it works, how to create a unique look in your images, how to target the S curve around the tones that actually exist in your images and don't just blindingly apply the same shapes of curves into every image because every image is different and the contrast adjustment in every image should be unique to this image and now you know and now you understand how to apply this inside the curves adjustment hopefully if you don't let me know down below in the comments i will be more than glad to further explain if you have found any part of this video confusing so please let me know if anything was confusing i will be more than glad to explain it if you like this video, make sure to leave it a thumbs up down below. It really helps me out. Also consider subscribing to the channel because I usually upload photography tutorials, filmmaking tutorials, drone flying tutorials, and sometimes vlogs or travel videos and everything revolves around things you can do with your camera. So if you're interested in any of that, definitely consider subscribing. I upload new content pretty much every week and I have a lot of plans for 2020, a lot of going on. So definitely, definitely, if you wanna follow along, subscribe to my channel right now so you don't miss out on any of those videos but that's it for now thanks for watching see you next time hopefully and bye bye